In a London Drawing Room by George Eliot, 1819-1880 The sky is cloudy, yellowed by the smoke. For view, there are the houses opposite, cutting the sky with one long line of wall, like solid fog, far as the eye can stretch, monotony of surface and of form, without a break to hang a guess upon. No bird can make a shadow as it flies, for all is shadow, as in ways are hung by thickest canvas, where the golden rays are clothed in hemp. No figure lingering pauses to feed the hunger of the eye or rest a little on the lap of life. All hurry and look upon the ground or glance unmarking at the passers-by. The wheels are hurrying too, cabs, carriages, all closed in multiplied identity. The world seems one huge prison house and court, where men are punished at the slightest cost, with lowest rate of colour, warmth and joy. OK, this poem is by George Eliot. Now, she was born in Nuneaton, which is in the North Midlands in the UK. Um, she spent... Uh, a lot of her later life in London as well. She was a famous novelist, poet, journalist and a translator as well. Um, I think she's probably most famous for um, her book Middlemarch. So what's this about? Well this poem describes the view from a London drawing room. The drawing room's the uh, best room in the house, the room where you would entertain guests. And it describes the scene and it also gives the the impression that London is dirty, it's boring, it's dark, it's uh, living in London is like living a life in the shadows. Um, uh, at this time, at the time this was written, London is in the at the height of the Industrial Revolution, and there's fog and smoke everywhere, and people look depressed. There's nothing happy about about the scene. So the sky is cloudy yellowed by the smoke okay so that the, the, the sky is cloudy there are clouds in the sky but everything's got this yellow tint or this yellow color from the smoke for view there are the houses opposite so looking out of the window the only thing she can see are the houses on the other side of the street cutting the sky with one long line of wall like solid fog. So this is a line across the horizon and it's like a fog. You can't, you can't see very far. You can't see any further than these houses. Far as the eye can stretch, monotony of surface and of form without a break to hang a guess upon. So, as far as the eye can see, everything looks the same. The surfaces are all the same. I imagine windows and windows, doors and roofs and nothing more. Just one long line of wall and this is what the city looks like. Everything the same. Uh, monotony of surface and of form. So it's monotonous, there's nothing different. Without a break to hang a guess upon. So it's all the same. There's, there, there is nothing different in the view. It's all identical and nothing for you to wonder about and say, I wonder what that is. You can see what everything is, it's very clear. No bird can make a shadow as it flies, 
for all this shadow. So, you, um, if a bird flies across this, there is no shadow. So you can't see a shadow of the bird. So it's dark and dingy because the whole place is just one great big shadow. So a bird can't cast a shadow. And I think this is also with the bird. It's con uh, showing the contrast between this grey, dingy city and nature. And even if there's a bird, this isn't real nature. As in ways or hung by thickest canvas. So overhung. Okay, so imagine a road or an alley. And over the top of that alley, there is canvas. There's a, a material. Um, so it's dark and shadowy. It's like going into a dark alley existing in this city. Where the golden rays, so this is referring to the sun, a very, ni very, ni very nice imagery, are clothed in hemp. Okay, hemp is a textile, um, is a cheap textile. And effectively, the r golden rays of the sun, um, it's like they're wrapped up in hemp. Yeah, they're wrapped up in textile. So everything is dark and dingy. No figure lingering pauses to feed the hunger of the eye. So the, you, you can't see anybody stop. Yeah, the, If you can see people, they're all going somewhere. And uh, there, there is, um, uh, th there is nobody walking in the street who stops. Everybody's on their way somewhere. They're rushing everywhere, and a figure stop, the a person stopping to look at something or stopping to do something, to make a difference to your eye, to make a difference to the scene. And I love this to feed the hunger of the eye. So this is another way of saying the scene is so monotonous and boring that the eye is hungry. It wants to see um, uh, something different. Yeah, something that's out of the ordinary. Or rest a little on the lap of life. So nobody who is in 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 the view stops to rest a little in the lap of life this is to rest to stop and enjoy flowers to stop uh, stop and enjoy life to stop and smell the flowers yeah just to enjoy the scene or enjoy being there but nobody stops nobody pauses to rest or anything like that everything's got to be at full pace and clearly all of this is a criticism of the industrial nature of uh, of London. Yeah, everything's going at this quick pace, but the city lacks sun, it lacks warmth. This is like um, a punishment for um, destroying nature. All hurry on and look upon the ground. So everybody just keeps rushing, going quickly, 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 with their heads down. They're not looking around them. They're they're mm, thinking about their own things. Yeah, they're worried about their own problems, and they're not um, uh, interested in anything. Or glance unmarking at the passers-by. So they don't even look at each other. They make no attempt to communicate with each other. Each person in their own world. So maybe this gives an idea of, of uh, the solitude of living in the city. The wheels are hurrying too. Cabs, carriages, all closed in multiplied identity. So now she's talking about the traffic and the traffic is exactly the same as the people the traffic is hurrying from here to there and 
uh, all of these cabs and carriages, they all look the same and they're all closed in their own world. And they're not, there is no communication between them. Yeah. Um, and I think she's also giving the idea that she feels very alone in this world. The world seems one huge prison house and court. So this is like uh, a prison. Yeah. Um, it, it talks about the state of London. London is like a prison and court. London is enslaved by the Industrial Revolution where men are punished at the slightest cost. So where a prison or in a court where for the smallest thing you can be punished um, with lowest rate of colour, warmth and joy. Um, so may, mm, this is, I think this is saying that this lack of originality, lack of colour, lack of human warmth, lack of happiness and joy, that's why it's a prison house where people are punished for the slightest sin, the slightest mistake. So enough. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye for now. In a London Drawing Room by George Eliot.